live from the House of LeMay Makeup and Dressing Room. Here comes Amber. Stop what you're doing. Here comes Amber. She's just doing what she can. Here comes Amber. Cue the spotlight. Here comes Amber with two drinks in her hand. The matriarch of fashion, secret sewer glasses, you can't look away. Ask her, does she do it? It's really nothing to it. She's got that sound on the game. If you have a party, or if you're feeling naughty, call up the house of the maid. Here comes your favorite gal. Here comes your queen. Here comes the talk of the town. Ladies and gentlemen, please turn off all cell phones and get ready for your host, Amber LeMay. Hi there, we're back. Yes, and I've missed you. But you know what you could do to really make me happy? Is first you gotta like, share, and subscribe. All right? We really need you to do that right now because you don't want your friends to miss this great show we have tonight. Oh, and it's a great one, and we've got lots to talk about. So, um, you know what? I've been just been gone a week, and look what happens. A hurricane in New England. No more sex on OnlyFans. Mississippians are taking horse dewormers to beat COVID because they don't believe in vaccines. Uh, let's take a look at all those headlines. Now, as we're talking right now, a hurricane is landing in New England, the first time in 30 years, and their name is Henri. Really, National Weather Service? This is the name you chose? That doesn't sound like a hurricane. That sounds like the straight foreign exchange student I met in Provincetown on Wednesday night. Hurricanes shouldn't sound like a cologne designed by a French fashion designer. Hurricane by Henri. <laughs> anyway, anyway, stay safe, everyone. And, and later in the show, we hope to have a report from Rocco as he was right in the middle of it all in Long Island when it hit. So hope you're out there, Rocco. Hope you're safe. So and now in Texas. Ah, uh, Texas. The Florida of the South, if the South didn't already have a Florida. <laughs> Turns out Texas Governor Greg Abbott was diagnosed with COVID after making masks illegal. Uh, mask mandates illegal. Oops. The absolute irony of this e-haul dipshit telling schools and businesses they can't mandate mask wearing while contracting the very disease a mask would have protected him from. Now, the night before his diagnosis, the governor attended a massive fundraiser, mostly elderly conservative voters in attendance. So people are definitely going to die now. They should call this move pulling a Herman Cain. I don't understand conservative Texans push to restrict voting. You guys keep killing all your constituents. There's going to be no one left to vote for y'all. Now, in related Texas news, the lieutenant governor of Texas blamed the surging COVID numbers on black people. Well, duh. Texas lieutenant governor and clear distant relative of our own Russell Dreyer, Dan Patrick, went on Fox News, the Laura Ingram show, and blamed the recent surge in Texas COVID numbers on black people. Now, there's three things Texas conservatives love to do. Eat brisket believe Trump won the 2020 election, and blame brown people for everything, every chance they get. And in other dumb conservative views, news, oh yes, there's more. Citizens of the great state of Mississippi, I'm sorry, Lucy Bell, they're afraid to take the COVID vaccine for fear it'll reconstruct their DNA and turn them into a magnet, place a tracking chip in their body that's different from the one they already have in their cell phone, and it all likely will make them even really gay for Obama. So instead, they have decided 
the wiser move is to go to the local animal feed store and start taking a horse deworming pill to help fight off COVID. Because Fox News told them to do so. I'm serious. There's going to be no one left to vote for Republicans in another year. They're killing their own people. Mississippians are asking a are taking a horse dewormer pill to fight COVID because Fox told them to do so. Fox News hates science and Dr. Fauci so much, they're telling their viewers to take horse deworming medicine to fight COVID. <sighs> and now for some really depressing news. Only fans, the online amateur porn site where people pay for direct content, content from sex workers, is banning sexual content on their site. Does OnlyFans know why people use their site? And now I get it. If you don't want to be in the amateur porn business, but recognize your customers and your product. This is like if McDonald's decided to stop making hamburgers or if Coke decided to just be Sprite. Or if the United States decided to stop nation building after spending trillions of dollars over 20 years in a third world country, no other nation or empire has ever been able to conquer and just pick up stakes and leave while the uber religious conservative hillbillies you kept at bay for two decades take over again unopposed. Uh, okay, maybe it's not just quite like that, but you see what I'm getting at. Hey, OnlyFans. This is what you do, man. You made billions of dollars off sex workers during the pandemic, and now you're suddenly against porn? That's fine, OnlyFans. You can clutch that pretty pearl necklace if you want. But we all watched how you got it. And that's this week's headlines. Yes, we are back. So it's time to talk to Russell. Russell, come on in. Hey, Amber, how are you? Oh, I tell you, Russell, it was a long week in Provincetown, but we sure did have fun, <laughs> didn't we? Oh, we did have fun. Yes, we had to be uh, careful and safe, but we had fun. So. Yes, we did. We, you know, most of the, well, I think all the places we went, we had to prove vaccinations and people wore masks inside and we were as safe as we could possibly be. So, uh, yes, we did have a good time. And, you know, we tried to get some pictures ready to show tonight, but what, by the time we got to town last night, the photo mat was closed and so they couldn't develop our film. And so we're putting together a special uh, P-Town show next week to show some of the clips and uh, pictures that what we had so much fun with this year. So that's next week. So that'll yes, be the uh, the train beavers that process the photos refuse to work overnight. They only do daytime. So <laughs> but we're, we're happy. We're happy to have them and uh, we'll show them all next week. So stay tuned. All right, Russell. Maybe, I know we have some new viewers tonight. So tell them the best way to watch Amber Live. Well, the best way to watch Amber Live is on YouTube because it's in full HD there. So you can go watch on YouTube at, thank you, Jack, at youtube.com slash Amber Live. Uh, and that's a great way to watch Amber Live. But there's a lot of other ways to take us in. Uh, you can watch on Facebook. You can, I think you can find us on Twitter usually. You can find us on Twitch. And we have a lot of new content out there that's, Arriving on multiple times a day now on uh, TikTok. So we are working on our TikTok like crazy. We have uh, probably by the end of tonight, we'll have about 4,800 followers on TikTok. I know it's growing quickly. Um, and there's a lot of content there that we won't be putting on other uh, media, social media. It won't be included in this show. It won't be on... Uh, Facebook. So go over to TikTok. You can find us at Amber LeMay Live on TikTok and just follow us there. Help drive our numbers up. Leave lots of comments. Share it with your friends. And it's a lot of fun. If you want a, a head start on seeing some of the things we did in P-Town, they're already up there. So go check us out. <laughs> and if you're if you're over there on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. We have almost 500 subscribers. We'd like, like to get over 500 tonight. So if you haven't subscribed on YouTube, Get on over there and do so, please. Because you know what happens? When you subscribe, 
you'll get notified about when we go live. And we don't only go live on Sunday nights. Oh, no, no, no. Every <laughs> Wednesday night, we could do Amber Chat, which is an hour of me and Russell and and a bunch of other people get online and we just talk about whatever's happening. Now, we weren't on this past Wednesday because we were busy in Provincetown. But the week before, we had someone from Hawaii. We had someone from Israel. We had Leah from Canada. We had Florida, Tennessee, Massachusetts, New York, Ohio, Illinois, Indiana. Just people, Tennessee, people commenting and just having fun. So uh, that's every Wednesday night. At uh, around 8.15, we go on for about an hour. So you want to know about that. So make sure you subscribe and uh, ring that bell. Yeah, and uh, Rocco often stops in and uh, we'll chat with you. And if you have questions for us then, or if you want to come on live on Wednesday nights, that's your chance to be a part of the show. So we'd love to have Josh you. Josh Beaupre you comes Wednesday. on. He gives us Josh Beaupre gives us a sports report sometimes or mm -hmm. and just talks about his week. And uh, we just have a lot of fun. So uh, Wednesday nights, 815, come on in and we'll talk. All right. So Russell, now it's time for your favorite part of the show. <laughs> the thing that keeps us running, the LeMay Bustiers. And we want to thank you all very much for being part of uh part of the show in this way and it is really important we just paid for our website uh, again and uh, so any money you can help uh, donate to us will help pay cover the cost of that website and this week uh, Charlotte Todd lovingly sent us a check we highly appreciate it uh, but you can also do it even faster than that using the Venmo that you see there at RJD Pro uh, we have lots of Boostiers, and we also have Super Boostiers who have been with us for quite a while. And they are the, the heart and soul of keeping this show streaming. And you can give any amount you can afford if you can, but if you, we do have three levels with uh, rewards. At $25 or more, we'll send you a sticker. At $100 or more, you get a sticker and a magnet. And at $200 or more, you'll get a sticker, a magnet, and an Amber Live mug, and we really do appreciate all our Boostiers. They are very important. And again, it's Venmo at RJD Pro, or there's also uh, on AmberLive.tv, there's a button that you can use to get to a form to use a credit card to help us out. So thank you all. We appreciate it. Looking at that list, I see Michael Schultz. Happy birthday, Michael. Michael turned a special Ooh. birthday this week, so I want to say happy birthday to him. And I forgot, you know, during Amber Chat, we also had someone from England. Vampy was on from ah. England. We had England, we had Israel, we had Canada, and just a bunch of other places. So thank you so much for checking in on us tonight. All right, Russell, what, what picture do we have that people can submit? Oh, bef before to? we do that, uh, I think one of our other boostiers, uh, Randy, also had a birthday as well. Oh, that's right. But, you know, <laughs> I, we should say it very loudly. Happy birthday, Randy! <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> we had fun with Randy in uh, Provincetown this week. <laughs> so happy and, birthday, and I Randy. see Jessica says Amber in HD is quite the experience. So she mm -hmm. must be over on YouTube watching you. Yes. All right. So, yes. Yes. Tonight's caption is uh, vaguely related to the storm. Uh, it's from a previous trop tropical storm, Danny. Uh, and you can see there, they're showing the potential path of the storm. Uh, and so if you have a funny caption about that, please send it in to Jack via the comments and label it as a caption. Uh, and at the end of the show, we'll take some time to look at the funniest captions and go through them and Jack always enjoys that. So <laughs> and I don't think that was one of Trump's uh, marker replacements either or his additions. So. <laughs> no, it probably wasn't, but <laughs> no. you never know with him. <laughs> much, much, much smaller with that. Okay, Russell. Yeah, we want to check your uh, – oh, well, how much luggage? I tell you, it was a lot. I came home, came home and did three loads of laundry. Yes. Yeah, so it was <laughs> quite hot down there, so we went through a lot of clothes. Oh, it's Fred's birthday too today. Yes. So oh, happy, happy birthday. birthday Fred. Yes. Yes. So lots of birthdays. Yes. Yes. Happy, happy, happy birthday. And hello, Amber Crew. That's the, uh, is that the name of our Wednesday night gathering people? Yes. The Amber the, Crew. Our fans on Wednesday night are the Amber Crew. And so they are growing every week. So hopefully we'll yeah, see you all there. From, the Buck Bunch from Ohio. All right. So tonight's show, Russ, Russell, tell us about that. 
tonight's show is a great one, actually. We have Mrs. Kasha Davis, who is a contestant from RuPaul's Drag Race. And she is going to tell her story about how she got into drag, how she got onto RuPaul's Drag Race, and what happened from there and where she is now. She's got a couple of exciting new projects underway that she talks about in the interview. So uh, enjoy that. So, yes. All right, all right Amber. Very good. We'll, Have we'll, a great we'll, one. We'll, we'll bring you back in later on, Russell. All right. Yes. You know, one of the great things about doing a show like this is I've got to meet and talk to some great, great people. And one of them is Mrs. Kasha Davies. Now we recorded this interview two weeks ago, um, but uh, there's a lot of funny stuff and it's in four segments. So uh, the first segment, then we'll come back and do some live chat, then go out throughout the night. So uh, let's get it started. Let it roll, Russell. Well, I am so thrilled to talk to our guest tonight. She started off as a drag queen wannabe in Rochester, New York, then found herself the queen of Rochester, and then appearing in the seventh season of RuPaul's Drag Race, and then she created this documentary that's winning all types of awards. Before we bring her on, let's watch the trailer to her documentary. Hello, I'm Kasha Davis. Welcome to Suburbia. The biggest inspiration for me creating Mrs. Kasha Davis is emulating my mom. I started doing drag later in my life. And looking at the gay world, we didn't necessarily fit in. We wanted to have the home, the pool, the kids. This life that we had previously with our ex-wives. So I always wanted to be a full-time performer. And I realized at the age of 44, it's not too late. Going on RuPaul's Drag Race, I just felt like this is going to be a whole new adventure, a whole new life. Drag Race really put us in the forefront of entertainment. TV definitely changed the game. And with it comes good and bad. It kills me that I have not gotten on there. I get frustrated with our community, saying everybody should be young, white, and thin. You're too old, roll over and die. My insecurities took over and it really began to get out of control. Well, everybody likes a cocktail. There's always time for a cocktail. There's always time for a cocktail. His drinking had started to escalate. And at that point, I was ready to end the relationship. RuPaul's Drag Race created this template of how to be a celebrity drag queen. And it seemed to me that maybe I didn't fit that mold. I'm proud of her and the fact that she's stretching out of whatever she thought her version of drag was. She's showing that there are no rules. Grab hold of your dream and hold it close to your heart. You've got to run and jump, jump, skip to the side because you have to practice, practice, practice and work hard and never give up. Wow, there's a lot to unpack in that trailer, and we're bringing in that queen to help us unpack it all. Please welcome to my basement, Mrs. Kasha Davis. Mrs. Davis, come on in. Hi, I'm so glad to be here. Well, good. Glad, glad to be had, I'm sure. All <laughs> right. So there's so much where to start. So it all began in Rochester, New York. And you decided you wanted to be a drag queen. How did that come about? You know, I, uh, so I grew up in Scranton, Pennsylvania, in a little town outside of Scranton called Taylor. And basically, when I got divorced and came out, that was like, it was in the late 90s, but it was really 1970 in Scranton. And then I, <laughs> and then I came here to Rochester. So uh, I hadn't really had much experience seeing drag queens and then I, of course, I'm coming out, you know, coming out of the closet and I, and I gravitate to the, to the clubs and it was like Oz, you know, it was, the, Rochester was the, I saw my first gay pride. I saw my first rainbow flag and started to realize what all these things were. And I saw the drag queens, Pandora Box, Darien Lake, Aggie Tune, Ambrosia Salad, and they were just gorgeous and wonderful. 
And I didn't necessarily think I would be a drag queen. I didn't think I wanted to be until Mr. Davis and I uh, took a trip to P-Town and we saw Miss Richfield 1981. <laughs> she's been a guest. She's been a guest on the show many times. She's a dear friend. And this will air right when we return from P-Town. And I'm sure we'll have some clips of her. So how old were you when this, when you you came out? Oh gosh. Well, so I came out, it was, I was 28 when I came out. And uh, so that was probably in my early thirties where Mr. Davis and I went to see Miss Richfield. And, you know, she was just, I, I had the theater background and she, as you know, she was amazing. We saw her <laughs> in the, in one of the uh, consignment shops and she was like, Hey, you want to come see my show tonight? And we were like, okay, <laughs> this person. And then we're waiting for dinner and she drives by on her scooter and said, <laughs> you know, insults Steve's haircut and says, it'll come back someday. We were captivated and we saw her show multiple times that weekend and the whole ride home, all we could talk about was Miss Richfield 1981 and she sang live and she had a, a message at the end. And I said, Oh, well, if that's drag too, I'm in. Oh, that's great. She does have a great message. And we help her every um, year at P-Town. She hosts this drag brunch to raise w money for the uh, women of women. Oh, shoot. I can't think of the name. It's wow. And uh, but it raises money for the, the women in P-Town. And we help her with that. But she's a great, great person. Um, so you saw Miss Richfield in P-Town. You decided if that's drag, I want to be a part of it. Then what was your next step? Well, then I came back home and I knew that there was a show on Sunday night and I went right into the club and the, the club owner was Naomi Kane and she did Tina Turner and she was, you know, a fun, funny. And she knew I was a big drinker at the time. She knew, uh, you know, she knew exactly who I was. And, uh, I said, well, I'd like to do a show. Is there like a, a, a night that I, she's like, yeah, baby, come on down on Sunday. And I was like, Ooh, okay, Sunday. So there I was the following week I had to find. I went and I found the first mother of the bride dress I can find, and I found <laughs> and I found a, a, a maternity outfit, and I did Miss Richfield a version of Miss Richfield's lime jello marshmallow cottage cheese surprise, <laughs> and I did I enjoy being a girl, and it was I rehearsed like over and over all week, and I just I had so much fun, and of course you know it was a different kind of experience the first time, you know, I just was doing it for fun. And then I kind of got hooked, you know, it was just, it was the theater. I could do theater. I could create a character and do theater after work. And I didn't have to worry about because I, my career wasn't allowing me to make it to rehearsals for theater companies. And so I was able to con contain it. And it was something that Mr. Davis, Steve and I can do together. And so uh, what, what, what was the reaction to the uh, established uh, Rochester Queens as you burst onto the scene? Well, so in my mind, I thought, well, this is interesting. There's not a Miss Richfield. There's not a campy housewife uh, mother character here. We've got, you know, Darian Lake, who's bawdy and sexy and dirty. We've got Aggie Dune, who's a glamorous diva. Uh, we have Pandora Box, who was at the time, she was like sort of the, you know, the the young, young, pretty one. And, uh, and Ambrosia Salad was the, the club kid. And I was like, well, I, in terms of theater, I was like, there's, I'm not going to be a competition for them. Like they're, we're not going to pick, they're not going to pick Pineapple Princess by Annette Funicello, you know, <laughs> like me. Uh, and so I was able to do this music that I love so much and I was able to fit in and they, they were great. We have a wonderful community here where we, it, it was the whole drag family community where we, yes, we teased each other, but we helped each other along the way. All right. So you get regular gigs there in Rochester. How many clubs in Rochester were offering uh, the stages to the Queens? Well, at the time there were two and it was club mothers and then tilt. Uh, the big, big, big one was Marcella's and it was previous. The day I moved to Rochester, that <laughs> club closed and I didn't know that. <laughs> So I didn't know that, but, uh, so I gravitated to mothers cause it was mom and, and, uh, the other club was more like the dance club and there was like spotlight performances. And so this was a cabaret style, um, 
nightclub. And so I gravitated there. And then, so back then we did shows on Wednesday nights, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturday, Sunday. And I would do probably three days a week and crawl in like late at night and maybe have a couple more cocktails at home. Uh, and then uh, wake up early in the morning and go to my my, my day job. Well, the good news was that I didn't start until 11 o'clock, 10, 30, 11, so I could kind of get through the morning. But that's when I was drinking. And that was, uh, sometimes I think that was my motivation. I used to say, oh, I love to perform. But I also liked the free drinks at the time. <laughs> Always, all those drink tickets. So that's part one of our interview with Kasha Davies. We're going to get more into about her sobriety and how that's affected her, her character and uh, many more items. And by the way, that, that benefit that we did drag brunch for with Miss Richfield was for helping our women. How? <laughs> yes. And that last Friday, we raised $100,000 for how. It was amazing at the patio restaurant there in Provincetown. A hundred thousand dollars for just just a drag brunch. It was amazing. But right now, let's hear a message from one of our sponsors. Summertime, and it's time for vacation. Vacation. Hmm, where would I want to go? Ah, I know. I think I'd like to go to the beach. Uh, don't worry, I'm bringing my vodka with me. Oh, wow. If I'm going to the beach, you know what? I'm going to need some beach towels. Where can I get some quality beach towels? Oh, I know. Amberlive.tv. There's a bunch of collection of really nice towels. And Oh, how about some t-shirts and some muscle shirts? Those would look nice on the beach. And let's see. Uh, oh, if it gets cool at night at the clam bake, what am I going to wear? I better take along my... Amber Live TV sweatshirt. Yes, that would be fun to wear. And then at night, oh, oh, at night, oh, I don't have to order anything because I already have my Amber Live TV pillow. Oh, so soft. You're going to love it. And then the next morning, what are you going to need? You're going to need an Amber Live mug to drink your coffee or whatever you want to put in it. <laughs> and if you haven't gotten enough peen lately, check out our Rusty Peen collection. Everyone wants more peen. All this and more is available at amberlive.tv. Order yours today. No, All right, so, so you're performing multiple times a week. Um, how long did you do that before you said, I'm going to audition for RuPaul? Well, I'll tell you, right before that, Aggie Dune and I said, you know what, this nightclub performance is a great... And she was booked with Naomi to do a impersonation show, you know, Tina Liza share that um, uh, at a Italian party house in a suburb of Rochester. And she was booked for it and he canceled and he, uh, he called me and he said, can you do it? Well, I thought I got the, the root, like it, this is before RuPaul's Drag Race. I mean, this was like, are you kidding me? I'm going to perform with the legendary Agadoon and we're going to do, and so we have been doing this show now for 17 years. We're still doing it. And it's our quick change comedy impersonation show of all of the divas. And it's so much fun. And we've performed a little bit of it in P-Town. And, and it's just a joy. And uh, so we were doing that. And we were doing a little bit of the, the nightclub stuff. And then Pandora Box gets cast on RuPaul's Drag Race Season 2. And we thought, well, if she can do it, we could. <laughs> <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, well, currently she's an all-star on uh, All-Stars again. Again. This is her third time. So Darian Lake then get ca got cast. And I auditioned for all seven seasons. And then finally on the seventh season, they said, if we don't get her on here, she's never going to leave us alone. And uh, that's me. You know, I, I was brought up in this uh, this work ethic where you just keep on keeping on and you keep trying. And so uh, I made it my priority to be seen. And I learned a lot about my drag and myself in that process, because what I was trying to do is I was trying to give them who they already had on the show instead of just being me. And uh, that was a big learning experience for me, because all too often... I was just trying to be somebody else instead of just being my most genuine self. Okay. 
I know you had to sign something that you couldn't talk much about the show. Can can you talk now? <laughs> oh, I can talk now. It's been years. So <laughs> okay. Uh, so who was on the show with you that season? Oh my gosh. Well, of course, we all know Trixie Mattel, uh, Katya. Uh, so those two have their their show called Uh, and <laughs> Violet Chachki. Uh, she won. She's the waste. Um, not a waste. The waste. <laughs> And uh, Pearl and Max and a Ginger Minge, who uh, is currently on All Stars, and Jaden Dior Fierce and Jasmine Masters and Kennedy Davenport and uh, and Candy Ho. So we were the season, season seven, right after uh, Bianca Del Rio won. So, I mean, there was this sort of like, you know, it's Bianca. I mean, she that particular season really was incredible. And they tried to change some things for season seven in terms of the marketing and the way that they played the game. So they went from sort of uh, one style of drag to they wanted fashion. And they kept they kept saying to us, we want fashion. And I was like, oh, that's not what I gravitated towards. And then, of course, what did I do? I tried to give them what they wanted. And, um, you know, the experience was life changing and positive. I have really nothing bad to say, but I will say that I was very guarded and uh, and still drinking at the time and uh, sort of just in my head and I wasn't competing and said I was trying to be a theater person and be like, we're all good. Let's all help each other. That doesn't work for reality television. What was the biggest challenge other than not or trying to fit into their mold? What were some of the other challenges you had? Well, I think that one of the biggest challenges for me at that point was being away from my husband and kids. And then also... You know, uh, I was really heavily into my drinking at that time. And so during the day to not be able to have my vices, it was it. Well, I was probably going through withdrawal. That was a lot of panic it brought on panic. And so that would kind of stop me in terms of the, the progress. Um, it wasn't until just a few months after it was aired, probably a year after filming, that I ended up dropping to my knees and, and asking for help and got, and, and got sober. So now I'm sober six years. So that's a, a, a joy. Very, uh, very good. You know, better for me uh, and for everybody around me. <laughs> <laughs> you know. How has your life changed after, since uh, the, your appearance there on, on Drag Race? Um, how, how are people perceiving you? What or how do they perceive you? And uh, why aren't you an all-star? I don't know. Well, first and foremost, my life changed completely. I was thrown into the 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 this platform of RuPaul's Drag Race, and I was given the opportunity to change my career. And I have a wonderfully supportive husband who said, "Let's do this together." And as I mentioned, crashed and burned in terms of self-doubt and not a lot of bookings. So I got sober. And in that sobriety, I started to realize, you know what, Ed, Mrs. Kasha Davis, this is a business. And you need to work this business and make those cold calls and make the connections with people like Miss Richfield and Coco Peru and Dixie Longgate and start to say yes to interviews like this one. Do the things, do the work, get out there, make the connections. And like any business, things will continue to grow. And make your presence known on social media. Make your presence known on uh, YouTube, et cetera. And so then that's where the process began. So my life changed completely, and I was finally doing what I always wanted to do, and that is to be a full-time performer. If I came to see your show, what would I see? Well, you'd see a lot of dad jokes. I like uh, Mrs. Kasha Davis, dad jokes and address. Um, I'm goofy. Uh, I will sing live. I will get you laughing. And then I will get you to cry. Ooh. I'll tell the truth. You know, I feel that especially now with so much, right, so much social media that you can't hide from. Well, you can. But I choose not to hide from the truth and to be as open as possible because people can sense that. You know, when I worked in telemarketing, I was a the manager and I was a trainer sometimes and director, blah, blah, blah. But what I was teaching people is that you need to present yourself 
and to listen to your caller and to dress in your dress code and to be present. And they'd be like, well, what's the difference? They can't see us. It's human beings. We can sense this back and forth through technology. So I think that it's so important that people are honest and open as entertainers. Because like, let's face it, if you tweet share, she could reply. You know, there's that connection. 50-50. <laughs> yes. Before COVID, what was your weekly or monthly schedule? And then what happened when COVID hit? Oh, gosh. Well, so before COVID, I, you know, I traveled pretty frequently throughout the month. And then I had a wonderful uh, a network of, of, of gigs here in the Rochester area. We have our drag brunch and then we have our uh, stand up night. And then Aggie and I would do our big wigs. Uh, performances and these are things that Mr. Davis and I would do together and then I had my drag story hour that I was doing at Blackfriars Theater and what a joy it became like like the the thing that I looked forward to the most and so COVID hit and I thought well Mr. Davis I'm gonna have to find another job because what is a drag what's a drag queen to do you know I thought okay I can post a couple things but I don't know what that's gonna do and and then I noticed some drag queens were just putting their um, Venmo or whatever. And I was like, well, that's just, I, 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 that's not enough. That's, I, you know, whatever you need to do. But I said, you know what? Let's do story time live over our social media because the parents that are watching uh, uh, or that are out there could use the break. Their kids can watch this. We did it twice a week and our daughter picked the books. And so we did story time live twice a week and we've got messages from all over the world. We ended up doing 100 story time live shows and then I would do like a Monday, I called it a makeover, but what I did was I took off my makeup and I shared some of my life experiences of things that helped me get through. And I tried to just put out all of that sort of positivity and it was really self care for me. But because of that, I started to get some more, uh, some Zoom gigs and some interviews like this one. And, and I say, you say yes. If somebody asks, you find a way and you say yes, because when you do, you make connections and you never know what's next. Well, the Department of Health has told me not to say yes so often. So I have to be a little <laughs> leery of that. Good one. <laughs> There's plenty more. Um, she's happy. She's opening up some more doors for herself professionally. And it's just very exciting. And I hope you're enjoying watching this as much as I enjoyed interviewing her. And I'm enjoying watching it right now. Oh, she was just a super inspiration. Hey, Russell, come on in. Hey, Amber, such a great interview. <laughs> oh, I, I could talk to her for hours, you know. Just, yeah. Yeah. Just so much. And, well, we have more coming up about her imagination station and some of the other things that she's doing, and just uh, very inspirational. All from Rochester, New York. Who, you know, who knew? Who knew? Who knew? Uh, also, <laughs> um, have we have we heard from Rocco? Do we know if he's okay with uh, uh, Paul Reed? Uh, I, I do have a video from Rocco, but I believe he is also going to try to be live tonight. So Okay, so we hang on see. for that. <laughs> We've got a couple more segments of Akasha, but we will have Rocco, something about Rocco. All right, let's show that caption picture one more time. Yes, if you haven't sent in a caption yet, please caption this. This is not from the current Tropical Storm. It's from Tropical Storm Danny. And uh, apparently that was the path of the storm. Uh, yeah. But I'm sure you have some other comments to make about it. So just send those in the comments to Jack. Label it as a comment. And uh, we'll talk about them at the end of the show. Uh, I'm sure then, it wasn't uh, Hurricane Peter. I don't know. It's, uh, it might have been. <laughs> <laughs> and one more plug for the Boostiers, please. Yes, let's not forget the Boostiers. We do need your help. You help keep us on the uh, air or streaming. You can use the Venmo you see there at RJD Pro, and you can see you can also use a credit card at AmberLive.tv if you'd like to donate that way. And we appreciate all of our Boostiers very much. So, again, Venmo at RJD Pro, and that does help keep us streaming and keep us live so that we can come to you every week with these great interviews. Um, oh, and you can also good. order things from our website, as I see there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Very good. Well, let's get back with the segment number three of the Kasha Davies interview.
The doors have opened up for now. What's your schedule? What do you have planned? Where Are you on the road? So I'm fortunate. I have some great uh, performances still on Zoom. And I am uh, getting to go out and, produce, and to promote some of our uh, uh, premieres of Workhorse Queen, the documentary. And I have uh, been working on the pilot episodes for Imagination Station. Oh, we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll, t- we'll talk about that in a second. I'll oh, yeah. go back to work, Workhorse Queen. How did that come about? How, what, what, oh, gosh. what made you think, oh, I need to do a documentary? <laughs> well, I didn't. So I, uh, one day I got an email who said, uh, they, uh, Angela said, hi, I uh, am a professor at Carnegie Mellon, and I'm interested in doing a documentary on you. I don't expect you to say yes right now, but I'd love to sit and talk to you about it. So she came to Rochester, and she it was right after my birthday, and she brought cupcakes. Well, of course <laughs> I'm going to say yes, you brought cupcakes. But we sat, and she talked to me about uh, – she was very kind, and she said, you know, you didn't get to tell enough of your story on – uh, drag race and uh, you ha- and your husband have these wonderful show uh, videos on YouTube and she was quoting all of these so she had been watching and she said I'd like to help you streamline this story and help to tell the story well we began the process it took us about four years and she taught me so much about not just uh, uh, I don't know anything about making a, a documentary so she taught me that process and and how not to play so much to the camera. Because, you know, we are drag queens. We are just going to do that. We're going to make sure you watch us. But to, to be open and to be honest, she helped me in that respect. And then I was able to include my community and people that I adore and people like Aggie Doon, who has been has been trying for years to be cast on Drag Race, to be a part of this, you know, kind of worldwide phenomenon. So um, that just... It, it, it just continued to evolve. And then the trust grew and she followed me everywhere. She was up my butt. She was down. We went to Australia. We went to New York city. She was here in Rochester all the time in our house, filming, asking questions. And then I didn't hear from her for a while. And I was like, Oh great. The project's not going to happen. That was just the, but no, she was busy working on putting together a team. And what they do is they, they watch all the footage and they, they pull out all, all the words and they find the story. And I, I think she did a, I'm just so very humbled and flattered by this, the, the work she did and put that story together. When was it released? Oh, uh, was it January at Slamdance? It was our first um, uh, film festival. And now it's been, so it's touring on film festivals and uh, Angela is in negotiation for a streaming platform or network. I'm not exactly sure. She won't tell me. I don't know why. I guess I have a big mouth. Uh, I do. And she, no, but it's a part of the negotiation process. So we're excited to say that it will be also uh, not only on the streaming, uh, the um, film festivals, but on a network or streaming platform soon. I'm sure it will be. There's so much out there. They've got to fill content with something. Why That's- not you? Exactly. Why not? <laughs> you mentioned a theater background. Um, what was that? What was your theater background? I had, I had a scholarship to a, a theater school, a, a theater program at a school in Pennsylvania. And I enjoyed uh, participating in, you know, children's theater and, of course, all the different, you know, theater programs. And I went I went to, to uh, they had us work at a ballet company and then I jumped right in and learned ballet. And I loved and I loved if I could dance. I would dance every day of my life. I loved that. And uh, and so it was a great experience. And uh, I went to New York City then and flopped. I, you know, I was young. I got a couple parts in these off, off, off Broadway shows. And I'll never forget, her name is Lori Peters. Lori was the original Liesl in um, Sound of Music. And she was in, oh gosh, I can't think of it all of a sudden. But... So she was in some movies and some television shows. And she said to me, you know what I think you want to be? And I was like, what? She's like, I think you want to be a drag queen. And I don't even know what she was talking about. And I was like, what? And I don't know whether she was intuitive. I mean, I wasn't really doing it. We were just in, we were acting. She was our acting coach and our director. And I was like, okay, lady, I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm going to be a star. 
Um, and uh, yeah, so that was that. And so my little New York City run ended quickly and I went back to Scranton with my ex-wife and we ran bingo halls. <laughs> but, you know, we laugh. It's helped me because now I run bingo sometime on Zoom, just like Miss Richfield. Uh, I, yeah. I know what you're talking about. I know <laughs> what you're talking about. What college in Pennsylvania was that? It was Marywood College at the time, Marywood University. Okay. I haven't heard of that, but I'm sure it has a fine theater program if they ask you <laughs> yes. to be a part of it. So, um, oh, what's her name um, from RuPaul's Drag Race? Just got hired to do the touring company of oh, Hairspray. Nina West. Nina West. Nina West. Yes, yes. Is that something you'd be interested in? Oh, of course. Yes, Nina West and I are um, – so it's funny. Uh, she and I both are – interested in doing children's programming. She and I both have a, a, a positivity persona that we work towards, uh, you know, being on our social medias. And uh, yes, we have the theater interest. And she, uh, our, our man, we have the same management company and they called and they said, Nina can't do this particular gig. I was like, I'll take anything. Whatever she can't do, I'm in. Because again, there's a similarity there. So she's very popular. And things are going well for her. I couldn't be happier. She's on, I mean, she, she did something with Kermit the Frog. Uh, she's had a lot of work with Disney and Nickelodeon, I believe. So things are going well for her. And I'm so happy for her that she, this is a dream role. Uh, wow. and, yeah, and it's terrific. You mentioned your, your, your um, sobriety. And you said yes. how that has changed your career. Can you talk more about that? It's changed my life. You know, sobri my process of sobriety, it, 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 was, it brought me to my knees and it had the whole process of rehabilitation made me realize what I'm grateful for, helped me to appreciate and to reconnect with my spirituality. You know, I had a an upbringing, which was a Ukrainian Orthodox church. I didn't know what they were talking about. It was in Ukrainian, but I felt the fellowship. I felt the, I felt the camaraderie. I felt something good about that experience, but I lost it. And so I kind of was like, yeah, I believe in, in, in a higher power. I believe in God, but it's like, you know, I, I, I've got this, I'm, I'm going to do this. And I'm, and so I lost touch there. And, um, the, the whole process has, really helped me to open my eyes to being in the moment and to realizing I'm not in charge and to try to do for others. And these were things that in some way, shape or form I had been exposed to or I was taught, but I was really gunning for trying to get things done my way and fill up my cart first. And, uh, and so, yeah, I couldn't be more grateful. And as a matter of fact, can you see, there's um, my only tattoo says grateful. And my parents are probably rolling over in their grave. They're like, nobody in this family is going to get a tattoo. But being grateful uh, and being, it teaches me if I look down at my arm it, to be in the moment and to be grateful for what I do have. Because when we do, and th that will continue to bring more. Uh, of what we're grateful for our way. Because I had that think, stinking thinking where I'd be like, hmm, nobody likes me or a comparison or, and, and that would spiral. Now I have that physical thing that I can look at and say, okay, what is good? And the more I look at what is good, the more comes my way. So truly life changing for me. Now that doesn't mean anybody else in the world has to get sober, but I thought, I'm happy to tell that story and to share my experience with. Wow. And there's more. There's more. Her new project that has just gotten momentum since we've talked to her two weeks ago. So we can't wait for that. And I see that Rocco is in the green room. So we're going to have a live report from Hurricane Henri from Rocco Zamboni. There's more to come. But you know what? People said, Amber, you were in Provincetown for a whole week. Weren't there things you missed while you were there? And so tonight's top five list is the top five things I missed while I was in Provincetown. Number five, waking up in my own bed. 
Oh, yes, I had my own bed in P-Town. Thank you, Boat Slip. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Mark. But it's not the same as being home. Number four, knowing which shows are on what channels and at what times. You know how it is when you travel. That's why we make it easy for you to watch Amber Live anytime on amberlive.tv. Number three thing I missed while in Provincetown, privacy. Oh, my gosh. Being a celebrity in Burlington, people are kind enough to leave me alone when I'm out in public. It's as if they ignore me on purpose. But in Provincetown, Amber, Amber, that's all we heard while hitting the streets. And pictures, my posing pose was getting sore. The number two of missed things was Vermont. The beauty of the Green Mountains, the sunset over Lake Champlain, all of it. You were right, Dorothy. There's really no place like home. And the number one thing I missed while in P-Town, you. I missed doing the show live last week. I missed Amber Chat on Wednesday. And I hope the feeling was mutual. And that's this week's top five. So let's get back with segment four, the final segment, segment with Mrs. Kasha Davis, and then we'll bring Rocco on. Let it roll, Russell. What was the reaction from the other drag queens who knew you as uh, what was your what's your famous line there about a cocktail? Well, always time for a cocktail. Uh, yeah. So, what, what was their reaction when uh, they realized that? Uh, oh, they there, were. There wasn't any time. <laughs> they were relieved. Uh, most people who knew me truly knew me were were glad to know that I was working on on this part of my uh, life, and certainly because you know I was lo- I, I've mostly been a lot of fun but when i wasn't that would i would turn and they used to joke i used to love tangare um they would say when the tangare turns you know it would be the <laughs> switch and i'd be meeny 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 and oh that's not how i want to be very nice your new project you had you're pushing out there a new idea let's let's watch a clip of that and uh, we'll talk about it afterwards Hey there, boys and girls. I'm Mrs. Kasha Davis, and over the next few minutes, I'm going to introduce you to my fabulous vision, Imagination Station. Imagination Station is a kid's show hosted by yours truly. The show is about acceptance, loving yourself for who you are, and treating others with respect. Cross Pee Wee's Playhouse and the lesson-based Mr. Rogers, and you start to get close to what we're envisioning. Over the past decade, I have been a busy gal. From competing on RuPaul's Drag Race Season 7 to thousands of appearances across the country and in Europe, writing two children's books and hosting Drag Story Hour at Blackfriars Theatre. Oh my goodness! When does a gal get a time for a manny or a petty? (laughs) Imagination Station will be a kid's show unlike anything the world has ever seen. Let's face it, kids love me. From stories with my special pack of friends to trips out in the community. Tell me, fellas, what happens when you pull up to the scene of a fire? We're going to be doing some I Spy Hayride today. I see Poison Ivy. We'll teach our little ones about loving themselves and being the best person they can be. (laughs) You didn't shave today, but I did. That's all for now. I'll see you at Imagination Station. How fun. Yes. Where, where's it Where's it going? What's happening with it? Well, I'll tell you. So we are just about three weeks out. We will begin the filming process, and we've written four episodes. We've created a wonderful, fabulous set and costumes and all that jazz. And uh, uh, I wrote original music with Andy Pratt, an individual here. And so the goal is... Uh, the, the goal is to sell these four pilot episodes to a streaming platform. And so we've had interest from HBO Max. We'll see what happens. Uh, they wanted to see more. We're going to show them more. A couple other uh, platforms as well. And the bottom line is, when I was a kid, there was nothing like this on TV. The only thing that I can say is it was, you know, of course, Pee Wee Herman was like campy. 
But then, uh, you know, Mr. Rogers was so honest and sincere. And I thought <clears throat> if we can take Mrs. Kasha Davis, a drag queen and her husband of 18 years and show their life and what goes on in the imagination of a drag queen, imagination station, and add in story time and celebration of community. You know, the goal is to stay in Rochester and to celebrate this community like Mr. Rogers did of Pittsburgh. How exciting, how fascinating. Now those clips that we saw in that promo, how did you come about with those? Well, so we would do an episode on occasion called Out and About. And you see, I was at a, a, a petting zoo and then I was at a bakery and I was at a gym. And you know, this, this weekend, uh, Friday, uh, I will be going to a doctor's office. And so, you know, kids were, were might have concerns about going to the doctor. And the whole idea is Mrs. Kasha Davis is headed to the doctor. And what can you expect? And, uh, <laughs> you know, and so some of it will be, you know, uh, tongue in cheek humor, but some of it will be like, you know, real questions of things that happen at the doctor. And so, you know, the idea is that not to teach kids, this is how to be a drag queen. It's more so how to treat others who are out in the world who might be different with kindness. And that story happens to be told, just so happens to be told by a drag queen because when you love your most genuine self, anything is possible. Imagination Stations picked up by HBO Max. It runs for five years. It wins three, four, maybe five Emmys. And then what are you going to do? <laughs> well, you and I are going to go out to dinner and celebrate that prediction. Uh, and, <laughs> okay. and maybe do a casino afterward. No, uh, <laughs> honestly, my, you know, th this has been such a wonderful whirlwind of great things happening, the uh, documentary and now the children's program. You know, my next dream is to be uh, a grandfather, mother person to our kids' children. Uh, they don't have children yet, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing them. Uh, <laughs> that we have two adult daughters and one is engaged. So, you know, uh, it doesn't matter which one has the kids first. But so we look forward to being grandparents and we dream about having a camper and touring the United States and spending a couple weeks in P-Town and then going over here and making appearances as Mrs. Kasha Davis, as, as, as I see fit. Uh, hopefully, um, though, I will be so busy with my filming schedule that we'll have to schedule those times, you know, accordingly. But that the story time the Imagination Station children's television show is the ultimate dream that became exposed as time went on. I didn't realize it was my dream. And the more, and once I started to do the story time and I saw those faces light up, I thought, oh, that's, I never had that. And that's what I can do with this drag. And certainly I can continue to do New York, New York as Liza Minnelli and Does Your Mother Know and all that stuff. <laughs> Uh, and enjoy and enjoy it. But that is the the moment when I saw those faces looking at me uh, and I'm reading a book and their eyes, you know, I thought this is magical for them and it's making it magical for me. This is Kasha Davis. This has been an extreme pleasure and an honor to talk to you this this evening. Um, I wish you nothing but the best. Your future is so bright. I'm going to have to get some shades. I can't <laughs> wait to see what you're doing next. And do you have any words to uh, leave with uh, the Amber Live audience tonight? Well, first and foremost, I feel like I'm looking in the mirror. We both love glasses. We both are wearing pink. We like a, we like, we like a big accessory. So I just, I'm so grateful for you and for you inviting me to your program. And I just want to say to everyone out there, something that my mother used to say for children of all ages. She taught me this when I was a little boy, girl, gal, girl, boy, fella. She said, no matter what, every day after you brush your teeth, look into your own eyes and say, I love you. Because when you love yourself, anything is possible. So true. Thank you so much. See you soon. Thank you. That was great. That was just great. Whew. Yeah, it was. I, I was speechless. And I, I'm, I'm speechless now after watching it again. 
out of the 70 plus shows we've done here on Amber Live. This is one of my favorites. I just found her so inspirational, so genuine, such, uh, I just really enjoyed talking to Mrs. Kasha Davies. And uh, I do, I wish her the best of everything. And speaking of the best, let's bring in Rocco. Rocco! Hey, Amber, welcome back. Well, thank you. Thank you. So, Rocco, you're in, Lo you're in Long Island. How, how was Henry? What happened to Henry? Oh, it was pretty crazy. It was unbelievable. It's like the, they didn't know how bad it was going to be. They kept saying, oh, you better go buy stuff like milk and bread and, and coffee and alcohol because you might be trapped for 10 days with no power. Now, I got panicky, so I ran out and got as much alcohol as possible. <laughs> you know, I mean, you got to think about the necessities. So it, it turned out to be kind of a, quite a day. Let me just say, quite a day. Uh, do we have a video that you created? Yeah, I decided to sit back in the middle of this crazy storm and do a live report, which isn't live because it's pre-recorded. But you know what I'm saying? I was living when it happened. So it was live. All right. Well, let, let's show that right now if we can. Mm-hmm. Rocco Zamboni versus the internet. Hey, this is Rocco Zamboni. And I'm here with a report on Henri. That's right, the hurricane that has devastated this town. Let me tell you something. It was expected to be a force to be reckoned with, and it delivered, let me tell you. Look behind me. You see some branches? Maybe some twigs and leaves and stuff. Whoa. Did we divert something or what? I mean, this is devastating. Let me tell you another thing about this horrific hurricane. It was raining before. Let me tell you. Rain is bad. You know why? Because it gets things wet and your hair can get wet, and that's not good. Now, not only that, but this hurricane brought some crazy, crazy destruction. Like I said, those twigs, they didn't just fall out of the tree on their own. That was some crazy wind that blew them. Let me tell you, for a safety situation, I don't know if I would be traveling in weather like this. You see this hurricane? I'm in the middle of it right now. To say this hurricane blows is an understatement. So, if you out there want to know how bad it is out here from Hurricane Henri, I feel like I should be eating brie or something when I say it. Just look around. It's crazy. There was probably a flood somewhere. I know I stepped in a puddle before. That scared me. And when I went to work this morning, I expected trees down and whatnot. I got there faster than I would had it been a nice sunny day. So this hurricane is crazy. I don't know everybody out there, but if you got to deal with a hurricane like this again in the future, please don't go out, don't do nothing, just sit home, pray, put boards on your windows or whatever, because anything can happen. It was almost certain death today, I swear to God. I went out to the supermarkets, there was no hot dogs, no sausage. What the hell is going on? You people are panicking? I don't have time for this. I gotta eat. Like you need milk because it's raining out. What the hell's wrong with you? So anyway, this has been Rocco Zamboni with the current update on Hurricane Henri. Or as I like to say, Henry. Because let's face it, Henri's a stupid name. All right, pronounce the stupid H, Henry. I'll talk to you all later. I gotta go inside because I don't know what's gonna happen next. This is just freaking nuts. Love that Rocco. I'm Did telling you. Did he us for I, promo? What? Hey, uh, I ain't paying for nobody for nothing, all right? Less. So, so uh, I'm so never doing saying, that again. It was terrifying. So, are you saying that there might have been some hype upon Henri that uh, they were just uh, trying to scare us? Just a little bit of hype, you know. I mean, let's face it: the the, the weather people out there they love this stuff, you know. So, if something blows over, 
they're still going to talk about it. Like, no, no, you people better put boards on your windows because this shit's going to hit the fan. <laughs> I don't I think anything hit any there. fans. I was hoping to see you out there, you know, being blown over. <laughs> you know what? I was expecting that, and I was kind of looking forward to it. But what are you going to do? You know. Okay. Okay, so Rocco, you uh, are still working in in a hospital. Yeah. And, and I know that you were on a ward or a floor with a lot of COVID patients. Have you seen an uptick in patients there in Long Island? Yeah, man. Yeah. It's going up, you know, it's a little scary, but it's going up. I don't know how much it went up in the past few days, but I know one day overnight it was, it went from like, uh, I think 41 patients to 49 and then it went up more and, and the psych ward is all COVID patients. It's, it, that's really crazy. <laughs> so, you know, it's, 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 it's looking like it, it's going to be bad again. I don't know how bad, because I don't know if you heard. New York's going to have a new governor soon. Because for some <laughs> dumbass reason, Andrew Cuomo said, you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to quit. How about it? I mean, all right. He touched some people inappropriately. He groped them, all that shit. He was a douchebag for doing that. But come on. What the hell? You quit? I guess so. <laughs> so uh, are you going to uh, put your hat in the ring for governor Rocco no why would I do that I'm having too much fun being Rocco come on like I need to go out there and 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 have you know have you seen my past you think I'm going <laughs> to get elected are you crazy they're going to so say you're from... a wimble of May forget about it so Leah from Newfound Newfoundland um uh, Wants to know what do you do in the hospital, Rocco? Would you uh, elaborate on that? Well, my job, I, I basically go there and, and read erotic poetry to the hot nurses because, you know, they put in a long day. They need some pleasure too. And it's much appreciated, let me tell you. Yeah, I get paid in more ways than one. People re few people realize that that is an official position at hospitals reading erotic poetry to nurses. So that's yeah, like it's a very specialized thing. I mean, first off, I write a lot of the poems I read because, you know, I like to make it personal. And uh, so you know, what, it's, it's, what is your poetic style? I mean, is it more limerick? Is it more iambic pentameter? I I go more limerick and into uh, steamy. You know, think about like uh, those novellas or, or the, the erotic books where you used to see what's his face on the I can't believe it's butter guy who got hit with a goose. You know, think about that. Oh, that's my I kind can't of think of his name. I see him with his hair, but I can't think of his I name. I know what the hell I keep someone saying, Arolda, will, uh, but I know that ain't it. No, someone, someone will comment and tell us his name. Well, Rocco, thank you for being safe. Uh, and what was your beverage of choice there? Fabio, that's, thank you, Leo, it was Fabio. Fabio, <laughs> yeah, Fabio, of course. I can't believe it's not bad. Yeah, so what was your you. beverage of choice? You had a can of something and a teapot. I didn't understand oh, yeah. that. that. That was a four loco. I didn't have my, I didn't have my shivers with me at the time. So I figured, hey, four loco in a teapot looks nice on a table next to me outside in the hurricane. And it didn't blow over. It That's didn't crazy. blow over. Let me tell you something before I go. Yeah. That uh, Mrs. Kasha Davis, she was awesome. Not yes. only that, but maybe she should consider for an imaginary station. Was that the name of it? I come to Imagination I'm Station. Thank you. Hey, Bug and Shug, you know, they got an imagination. Just saying. Think about All it. Right. Maybe we can have a connection there. That would be great. I like, to, I like to throw these things out there, you know, or animate Amber. Come on. Think of her as a cartoon. <laughs> She's a clown, that's for sure. That's for sure. Thank you very much, Rocco. Thank you for checking in. I'm happy you're safe, and we'll talk to you next week. All right. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. All right. All right. Hey, Jack, come on in and let's talk about uh, how, how was things today on the board? Jack? Oh, things uh, on the comment board. Uh, things sure. are 
Yeah, well, we've got things on the board. Uh, we've got all sorts of things. Russell, let's see the picture of that board, that image that we have. <laughs> I will find the comments. Uh, starting it off with Cousin Craig, who says, is that a hurricane or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> and I like how the icon for the hurricane looks kind of like a 69, but yeah, <laughs> you know, maybe just in the eye of the beholder. Yes. Um, we've got Big J who says, here I am, rock you like a hurricane. Yes, <laughs> rock. Uh, rock Gary on. says, I think the weatherman had something else on his mind, and it wasn't the weather. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> and last comment came from Jessica, who said, Georgia and South, South Carolina getting screwed by Danny. Oh, no. <laughs> well, thank you so much for them, though. To do that, Jack, you got a nice uh, green screen behind you. you well, yeah, I found. Up? Well, as you know, I live in the sub basement of uh, of the building where Russell lives, and Rocco Zamboni rents out a room to me here, and he said, "Oh, hey, uh, there there might be a, a green room or some shit where you can take refuge, and uh, there's probably going to be some flooding or some shit. So I recommend here's what you do: you get a Jack." And you got to jack off the building so it goes up really high. And then you get some stilts that you put it on. And uh, here's, a, I drank up all the, uh, the friggin' alcohol in Astoria. So here's half a bottle of Hennessy. It's a shot. It's the best I could do. So thank you, Rocco. <laughs> and uh, uh, Jack, people have been asking me, I, you know, and I don't know Rusty Peen that well. But I understand you're a connection with Rusty Peen. Are we going to see any new Rusty Peen coming up soon? Oh, Amber, Rusty Peen is is so much. I can't believe people are asking for more Peen. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm I'm sure that you haven't seen the last of Peen. Well, you know, people were calling it Peen Town where we were last week. You know, that's. Uh... Is that what they were asking for? I feel like they were probably yeah. asking for <laughs> for two different types of Peen. Yes. So Russell, come on in. Let's let's close this thing out, Russell. Yes, yeah, so everybody seemed to need a hammer where we were. I don't know, <laughs> a oh ball peen or a Russell. claw hammer. There is a difference. Ball peen. We'll get they cousin Craig for peen. to do a a, a a TED talk, a Craig talk. Oh yeah, <laughs> on hammer. <laughs> Three and a half hours later. <laughs> uh, Russell, thank you so much for setting that interview up with uh, Kasha Davies. That was so good. Oh my God, I enjoyed it as much watching it as I did ask you know talking to her in person. It was just and that, that was we have to thank fun. Janet for making that connection and uh, helping out a lot on that whole interview. And uh, she did a great job. Hopefully, we'll get some more uh, RuPaul Drag Race people on the show in the future. We also want to thank Dave Hansen. Dave Hansen has been a writer on the show, and this is the last show that he's contributing to uh, for now. So we want to thank Dave Hansen for all his contributions yes. to yeah, Amber thank you, Dave. the last Thanks, uh, Dave. 70 some shows. Yeah. So, all right, uh, Russell, yeah. next week we're going to do a special uh, retrospective on our week in Provincetown. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so, we're going to have an interview from uh, last year with uh, Ryan Landry, and then we will. Uh, have some new video. We shot gigabytes and gigabytes of video while we were in P-Town. We should hopefully, keep your fingers crossed, also have uh, a new bitchin' in the kitchen that we shot. We actually shot two of them in P-Town, so those will be coming up. Uh, it might be a very drunk bitchin' in the kitchen, but, <laughs> <laughs> but Lucy Bell tried to, to cook. Uh, Kim, we would love to get Rue on here. We're gonna have to work yeah. our way up to that. We're we're start yes, we're yes. starting with the contestants. We'll get there. <laughs> um, so, we yeah. may need a few more bustiers to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, but it's all all about P Town next week. So uh, and all that's right. not Peen Town. <laughs> no. All right. Well, thank you very much, Jack. Thank you very much, Russell. We'll see you next thank week. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oops. Yeah. Uh. There you go. <laughs> oh, hey, we were on vacation. Thank you so much for watching tonight. I do hope you um, enjoyed the show. I know that I did. So we'll be back on Wednesday for Amber Chat, 8.15, and then uh, Sunday night for Amber Live, 8 o'clock Eastern. I'll be here. Hope you will be too. Bye-bye.
Hey, remember that time I fell down a well and it was full of rats and I had to eat the rats for a week before anyone found me? Yeah, that was terrible. Way more fun than this show. <laughs> <laughs>